As always, uh, thank you very much, Coach G, for having me. I can't believe it's been 12 weeks. It's yeah. absolutely wild. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so let's get into this a little bit. Uh, I hope everybody's staying safe with all these, you know, everything going on. But um, so today we're going to go over uh, winning each route, having a plan for each route on the tree, regardless of what your what the coverage may look like. Specifically, uh, we'll dive into the totality of the coverage, but we're really referring to uh, our own cover defender. Okay, I'm Mike Venucci. I'm from Long Island, New York. Um, I coach at Plain Edge High School, spent some time at the college level. I uh, run my own receiver academy, which I'm really grateful to do. Uh, here's my contact info if anybody needs it. Um, these are building off of essentially some of the previous um, presentations that I had given. So we're not going to dive into the true minutia of each break point. Rather, that, rather, we'll be coming up with a plan for executing each route based on uh, what our cover defender is doing. Uh, just an agenda, what we're going to be going over. I like to include some type of um, motor learning aspect in everything, whether it's a, a slide of its own, whether it's something big, whether it's something little I touch on. So we're just going to touch on one brief uh, excerpt from an article on visualization. Um, we're going to go over indicators, stance and start, line of scrimmage, second level release, stem, short 90s, long 90s, winning the hitch, winning the curl, comeback slant. If we have time, we'll get to the post and the rocker step. So this is just uh, a small piece from an article which talks about uh, visualization in stroke patients. Um, if I hit play here, we'll underline some important parts, okay? So it says results from numerous functional imaging studies indicate that mental practice, so that's visualization to us, um, activates a large uh, variety of motor-related brain regions in the upper and lower limbs. There's evidence from MRI practice involves virtually all the st uh, same stages of motor control as physical practice. So what this means is essentially that stroke patients who are unable to activate certain limbs, um, when they visualize moving them again, the same regions of the brain that activate while they are physically moving them are activating when they are um, visualizing moving them. So we can get reps without actually getting reps. So I tell all our guys all the time, like, see yourself executing what we're going over but before your first rep. I'll present them a video before uh, what we're doing in practice, what we're doing in a session of quality execution of what we're working on. That way, by the time they get there, they've already had hundreds of reps, um, whether it's in the car on the way to the session. Uh, their brain has seen and will put themselves through the stages of executing the rep the way it should be executed. So that's just the, the brief motor learning part for this presentation. Um, you're going to hear me say no indicators a ton of time. That's an abrupt or sudden change of height. And this slide has been in every one of my presentations because I, I believe it's that important. This is an abrupt change of height. It's not the gradual rise as we trans, uh, as we go from acceleration to max velocity. This is just like I'm, I'm driving out and then I pop up or I pop up before I drop down in a break. So no abrupt change of height, no change in stride. That includes our arm action. Our arms are connected to our legs. If my arms die or they rise up or they start changing or my stride chops up before my uh, break point, that's an indicator for a DB. He's going to drive the route or he's going to catch on to something. Uh, eye discipline. Obviously, we can use our eyes as weapons. We can move a defender with our eyes. But when we're not doing that, we need to look right through them. I don't want to stare where I'm breaking. This is another indicator. I'm always uh, threatening vertical. There are times to change tempos, but when we're not, we're going. Uh, we, if we froze the route prior to our break point, we should still think that if I hit play, you're going to continue on your vertical stem. And everything is a vertical until it's not. So we'll dive into stance and start, uh, five commandments. The most important thing is that the player is comfortable. Like we can try and fit guys into these parameters and this box, but if they're uncomfortable there, then they can't, they can't play football there. So it's not really about, you know, how we want them to look. It's how they feel in their stance. Uh, they need to feel explosive. They need to look explosive as they exit the line of scrimmage. Always prepared for combat. Obviously, if it's off coverage, you can be more relaxed with your hands. Um, depending on how pressed up he really is, you could kind of still leave him down if there's some cushion. Uh, no energy leak, so I don't want to drop. I don't want to rise. Uh, I, ideally, I want to exit at whatever height I'm in my stance. And then we should mimic that of a sprinter. 
uh, coming out of the blocks. Obviously, we don't have blocks at the line of scrimmage. We want to try and mimic those joint angles as best as possible. So here's just an example of a good stance. There are some parameters I like to look for in our guys. Uh, it's a bend in this back leg. My toes are dug into the turf. I have majority, a large majority of my weight on this front foot. Um, if we could get a positive shin angle, that's fine. Some guys don't have the dorsiflexion to do so. Once again, it's about comf uh, them being comfortable, not trying to force anything, but that's something we'll look for. Um, and then chest over knee, nose over toe. Same concept here, hands up, kind of ready for, for a fight. There's a little bit of space here, so he doesn't have them, you know, up like this, like you see kids do all the time. Could have a little more bend in his back leg. I mean, this is DeAndre Hopkins. If he's comfortable here, you know, let him go. It's, there's no true red flags. Uh, when I say coming out of the blocks, ideally, now, you're not going to get your 14-year-old kid to look like a Safa Powell. That's not how it works, but... This is the, the, the standard that we'd like to, to mimic in, in a sense, okay? Driving out, full strides, in attack mode. We are always in attack mode. Uh, one, one, one thing I'd like to bring up here is we'll, we'll hear guys always talking about, you know, you got to get low in your stance. You got you to stay low out of, out of the line of scrimmage. Um, and that's all good and well. But something we need to be aware of is You'll see this straight line here from the posterior part of his head all the way down to his heel, okay? When you're telling kids to stay low, they can't – a lot of them don't have the, the, the strength to get in this position, uh, this forward lean where the joints are stacked, like a, a proper acceleration position. So what they're going to do is they're just going to bend over. And essentially, the breaking at the waist, you're, while they look lower, they're really not as fast because they're not able to produce as much force in the ground. So just be wary of the words you use for your kids. Um, and we could dive deeper into that. If anybody has questions after this presentation, please reach out to me. Um, but just, just saying get lower, how are they getting lower, right? Like, are they, are they maintaining that acceleration angle or are they just breaking at the waist? Um, they're, they're, not, they're not the same. And then here's Julio, like, he's a different breed. I understand that you're not gonna get your, seventh grade kid to look like Julio Jones, but he's just in attack mode. Like there's no bullshit off the line. I'm out. Like he is, looks like he's running a hundred meter sprint. Obviously there's a little bit of uh, horizontal displacement to his stem. It's football. It's not a hundred meter, but he is in full attack mode. Like this is a sprint. Okay. And this is what we need to look like up until break point. Now, obviously we spoke about, there might be some type of change of tempo in the stem based on what you're trying to manipulate. But if we're, if we're not changing tempo, this is what we need to be like. Uh, so winning the line of scrimmage, always have a plan. So I can't, you know, I'm sure all of us can, can attest to this. You, you get a kid who we're doing one-on-ones or in a game, and he has a corner lined up on him, and he gets jammed up. And you ask him, what was your plan? And he says, I don't know, coach. I have no fucking idea. Major issue, right? Like, it's on us to present to our players all these tools explain to them when and how to use them for them to form a plan based on where that cover defender is aligned. Um, we're counter punchers. I got this from uh, Coach Liebs, the sideline hustle. I really liked it. I ran with it a little bit. Uh, we don't punch first, right? So he shoots, we shoot. We're going to manipulate with our feet most of the time. After he feels like he's in oh shit mode, he's going to shoot his hands. We're going to finish him off. Uh, if he's patient, we'll heat him up a little bit. If he's aggressive, we'll rock him to sleep. These are not uh, locked in, right? Like these are just ideas. Meaning it's just because he's aggressive doesn't mean we have to rock him to sleep. Just because he's patient doesn't mean we have to heat him up. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the speed release. Uh, when we have route leverage, we have a slower cover defender. He's, he's inside. We don't need to play around with him. Sometimes less is more. Let's just go. Okay. We're going to get some width and depth with our first movement. Uh, versus press, like hard press, we're, we're just out. Versus soft press, we might want to eat up a little space before we uh, execute this speed release, often paired with a blade, which we'll get into. So here's Brandon Cooks. He's working on Sean Smith. Sean Smith is not as linearly gifted as Brandon Cooks is. Brandon Cooks says, fuck you, I'm, I'm out now. So he's going to come to balance where he brings both feet together. 
and just gets width and depth to the point where he cannot match it. Um, and then it's, you know, then it's a race. And now ideally we could stack and you're going to see what I mean here. Uh, sometimes you don't want to stack. Where's the safety? But I guess when Drew Brees is your quarterback, it doesn't really matter where you are on the field. He's going to put it on you. But you'll see what I mean in a second. Come the balance. And then I'm going to get width and depth because I know this guy cannot run with me. And now it's a foot race. This is exactly where we want him. He's a bigger, slower corner. Why play around with him at the line of scrimmage? Why play around with him? Sometimes less is more. Sometimes football is really this easy. Balance out. The big thing here is we do want to get width and depth. If I try and shave him too close, he can get the hands on and recover. I do want to get width and depth. Here's another view of it from the All-22. He's down here at the bottom of the screen. Another example is speed release. So that was coming to balance. Uh, sometimes guy, we could spend no time where our first step, okay, my inside foot is up. My first step is gaining width and depth. I'm not, I'm not coming to balance at the line of scrimmage. Um, some kids are a little uncomfortable with this. I do like to come to balance because it almost adds like a, a hezzy or a, a change of tempo in it. Uh, but, you know, to each their own, you don't have to do either or. Uh, it's what you're comfortable with will work both. Um, so here's an example of Julio at the top. He's actually getting bracketed uh, or doubled with the uh, linebacker Thomas Davis on him, which is pretty disrespectful. You might as well put a trash can out there. Not that Thomas Davis isn't good, but Julio's a little bit more athletically gifted. So Julio's at the top. You're going to see him waste no movement. He's just going to get width and depth and run. Okay, so no waste in movement. I'm out here now. Like, come get me. Sometimes it's really this easy, okay? This is how do you know when to execute this? Who's my cover defender? Like, film study. Is, is, has your guy been struggling linearly? Is he, is he a slower cover defender? Uh, is he lined up? Where is he aligned? He, like, head up is a little iffy. Uh, if he's inside shade, you have a vertical route. Sometimes let's just go play ball. Uh, if you want to get a – sometimes we'll get a little – we'll get a little uh, – juice or some type of jab or hezzy or stretch when it's a, a better defender or we need to get him off his landmark. We need to freeze him. But when he's a sl linearly, like just doesn't run as fast as us, fuck him. Like, let's go. And then here's another one. This is Allen Robinson against Brandon Browner. Physical corner, uh, not as fast as Allen Robinson is. You'll see him, he gets beat with the speed release, and he tries to latch on, and A-Rob does a really nice job fighting him off. But this is no wasted movement. He turns it into a foot race. It's a good job shedding, arm barring. But he wastes no time and gets width and depth, turns it into a race. So now we'll move to our jabs. Uh, the objective here is to move or freeze a cover defender. So we're trying to pull him opposite of where we want to go. Uh, it's, I'm sure you guys have heard it. It's equivalent to a crossover uh, in basketball. We want, sometimes we'll tell guys, you know, act like you're dribbling a ball when we're doing drills, like feel it. It's the same thing. We're working that uh, shift the weight from hip to hip, pushing off our inside edge of our foot. Uh, and the biggest thing here is it's not just me picking my foot up and putting it down. My foot, hip, shoulder, and head are all moving together. Uh, it, we need all of them in sync to manipulate the cover defender. If I just pick my foot up and move it outside like I'm doing the hokey pokey, nobody's threatened. I need to threaten this guy. I need to pull him. So here's Baron Davis. Coach G, this is this is up in your your down in your territory. Yeah. Charlotte Hornets. Um, so watch it. Watch his his uh, foot, hip, shoulder, and head all together. Right, like it's not just one. They're all moving together to move the defender. I think that's Sam Cassell too. Great. Okay, so let's run this back and we'll let it play full speed. It's not just, it's not just this, right? It's not just his foot. His hip is coming out, his shoulder's coming out, his head's coming out.
Jamal Crawford, same thing. Foot, hip, shoulder, head. Foot, hip, shoulder, head. All together. We don't want to move one without the other. Okay, so here it is with Doug Baldwin. Foot, hip, shoulder, head. Move them inside. Paul Richardson, who he's not really, this really is not his game as much, but he's still able to execute it pretty well. Right, his defender is outside, a little bit of an outside shade. Moves him inside with the double jab. Allen Robinson eats up space. So the amount of space we eat up, like I don't want to work these jabs right here, okay? Because then he's not threatened. He'll just be able to react. I want to eat up a little bit of space here before I execute. Um, I like to leave a yard. I like to get within a yard, uh, like arms, arms distance. If I get any tighter than arms distance at the top, he can snatch me up right now. Okay. So I want to leave this distance a yard arms length. Uh, I'd rather miss, miss long than short, um, for him to miss with his, with his jam. Cause once he gets off balance here. Once his weight gets loaded up on this foot, because we're going this way, he's going to have to shoot his hands as his last resort. I want to be a distance away where I can get rid of him and be untouched. I, I want to avoid collision. Here's Van Jefferson, one-on-one to the senior bowl. Foot, hip, shoulder, head. All moving together. Back out. back out not in a rush a lot of guys will rush these and they'll kind of just pick their foot up and put them down pick their foot up and put them down put it down and this guy's just standing there because he's not threatened we're going to be outside our framework here and i think that's real important uh for guys and we're pushing off this inside part of our foot our our arch our inside edge our instep whatever you want to call it pushing off our inside edge and working back out Here's one more. This is uh, like a come to balance double. So now we'll move to a stretch release. And these are really the, this is the extent of, of what we're going to teach our guys. Like we'll present them these different uh, releases, explain to them when to use them, how to use them. They'll uh, apply them in game, in practice. Uh, and we'll get into the rest of them. There's not many more though. We don't want to overload them with, with 15 different releases and then they get out there and they have no idea what they're doing. So the stretch is where we're trying to pull or move a defender. It's more uh, like a motor. We're eating up space or a fire release. Uh, we're trying to move, you're usually moving laterally to pull him or stretch him away from where we want to go. Uh, we're resetting the line of scrimmage, eating up space. The amount of space we eat up is determined by what his depth is, uh, usually paired with jabs or a speed release. So here's Julio, he's got a slant, cover defender inside. He's gonna stretch him out here to win back here. Willie Sneed in the slot. We're patient. If we don't, if we don't pull him, we're covered. So we're patient here. It's usually paired with some type of jab, like that. Works both ways. So here's Curtis Samuel. He's going to work a vertical route on it, uh, fade ball. He's going to stretch him inside, jab and leave. Keenan Allen, stretch. And there's our jab. Devante, stretch, double jab. So the big thing here is, it's just, this usually works best against uh, like a shadow corner, a motor mirror corner, who's not looking to, to hard press, right? Like he's trying to match our movement. So we're gonna pull him out and leave him there with a couple jabs. The reason I said this could also be used with speed releases I don't have any clips of it, but Devante does a really nice job. I've clipped him doing Hezzy, but not the, the, the stretch. He does a really nice job of working this and then hitting a double 
or a speed release back out. So the big thing is pairing it with other releases, making them look the same. So here's a, another one that I just wanted to throw in because I think it's, it's awesome. It's difficult to execute because of the tempo of it. It gets rushed a lot, very similar to a stretch, but we're really just looking to freeze a cover defender. So it's almost like we're, we're, we're like frozen in time for our first step off the line of scrimmage. Um, can win in or outside, it's usually to, to release outside. So here's Devontae Adams. And, and if you took their combine metrics, uh, Devontae, Adams, Devontae Adams and Darius Slay, uh, they would tell you that Darius Slay is a much better athlete on paper than Devontae Adams. When you put the film on of them playing, it's completely opposite because Devontae Adams does such a damn good job of playing with his tempo, changing his tempo, um, and making everything look the same. So this is what we mean by Hezzy. Like this first step off the line is kind of eh. He's kind of just hopping into it to freeze Darius Slay a little bit, and then he leaves him. And there's a really good view of what it does in the next clip. So here he is working on, I, I believe it does, it's Sidney Jones, doesn't matter though. Same concept, okay? Right now, he's got both feet in the air, okay? The corner has both his feet in the air. None of, neither of them are in the ground. He can't do anything. That's what the Hezzy does. Like it freezes the, the cover defender for a tenth of a second. That tenth of a second is just enough for us to start our acceleration. Now, not only does he have to get his feet back in the ground, but he has to react. By the time he reacts, we're out in front. So here is the dive release. This is the last release um, that we're going to discuss. So we have the speed, the jabs, the crossover, the stretch, the hezzy, and the dive. Um, this is probably used the least. Um, it's similar to a diamond. It's like a reverse diamond release where I'm diving inside to work back out. The big thing here is we're threatening horizontally. Like I need to get my cover defender to flip his hip to turn inside and run. Uh, ideally, we want to attack with full strides to really threaten. The objective here is to get the defender turned to flip, flip his hip and run opposite, uh, can reestablish our vertical stem or get to our break immediately. It's obviously based on what the route is. So here's an example of Adam Thielen. Now, one thing I want to talk about here, this is a run play. Uh, Thielen's just gathering information, right? Like, how is this guy going to play me based on what releases? So Thielen, while he knows this is a run play, his cover defender does not. So he, Dylan, is going to, you know, work a release, steal a release, and see how what, what's going to work later in the game and what isn't. Uh, how is this guy going to play certain um, techniques? Regardless, here's the dive release, and you're going to see him work inside, back out. He's getting him to flip his hip to the inside because he threatens him horizontally. We want to think of it as attacking in Vs, and then he does a nice job over here. Here's Debo Samuel. I'm sure everybody's seen this route. It was all over Twitter. Um, but he does a really nice job threatening the corner hard inside. Sticks his foot in the ground, works back out. So he dies inside, works back out. Obviously, you got to be prepared for combat. This looks exactly, it's very similar to a dime release. It's just inside. Um, so we're prepared for combat. He extends his arm to latch. We throw him by. Now here, Debo works his back on his vertical stem because he has a deeper out route. But this also works fine against shorter routes where I'm just diving in and then working back out. The big thing here is that we are threatening him horizontally. If I bullshit this, if I bullshit this, he's not going to turn and run. If I bullshit this dive, he's not going to turn and run. I got to threaten him horizontally here. So now we're going to move to uh, winning with our hands, okay? So I had mentioned it previously. I uh, got this from Coach Leaves. Counter punchers, we never shoot first, right? Like he shoots, we're reactive. That's what puts him to sleep. Um, the, the DB's hands are going to be his last resort. 
So when we beat him with his feet and he feels like he's in a, you know, oh shit, like I'm about to get beat, his hands are coming. Obviously, that there's a caveat if he's a hard pressed corner, he's going to try and shoot his hands right away. For the most part, we beat him with our feet, his hands are coming. Uh, we work a slap chop, a shed white, and a blade. We, we, we don't present them with too much. Uh, these are the three techniques we work, and we hammer them down. So here's just an example of what we mean by counter punchers. Like he throws, we throw. We don't throw the first one. We throw the second, we finish it. Here's an example. Byron Jones shoots his hands. DeAndre Hopkins counter punches. Okay, we don't shoot first. We finish the fight though. So our slap chop, we equate it to our jab cross. Um, we're trying to strike elbow to shoulder. Really anything is fine, but ideally when we get elbow to shoulder, his whole body's gonna turn. Um, big thing that I don't think it's coach enough for that split second where I'm at the line of scrimmage, I want to see what I'm hitting. Like, this is the most important thing in the world. What's going on in front of me right now? This, if I don't get this guy's hands off me, I lose the route. It doesn't matter what I'm running after the line of scrimmage. So for that split second when the ball snap, my eyes go here so I can see what I'm working on, see what I'm trying to hit. Can't hit what you can't see. Okay, so here's our jab cross. Mike, uh, Mike Williams to the left of your screen. He's gonna, uh, DB's going to shoot his left hand. He's going to slap and chop over the top. Now you'll see him come all the way high here. Ideally, we're kind of shooting right above it and chopping it down to pull him, to pull him this way. Since he doesn't put much violence on it, like we're really trying to break his fucking forearm. Since he doesn't put much violence on it, this guy's able to speed turn and recover. Adam Thielen, similar concept here. He gets a little high over the top. We want to stay tight to that arm that's extended. Slap, chop, slap, chop. What I mean by that is this space here. Now, it's not like a true swim. He's not completely over the top. But just try to eliminate this space as best as possible. And then we teach one hand slap, two hand. Uh, really, it's if he shoots two, we shoot two based on film study. But, you know, whatever they're comfortable with is the most important thing. And then we're really trying to we're really trying to be violent here. Like, I want this guy to take a step inside because of the force I use to push him away. Coach, uh, I was just asked, could you just explain the difference again between the the dive and the diamond? Yeah, the dive is just inside where the diamond's outside. Essentially, like the way we run them is is very similar. If, for example, if, if Debo had a slant right now, well, he would he wouldn't he wouldn't do it against this coverage because he's outside. We'll say this cover defender's inside and Debo has a slant. Like, I'm just working it this way to win this way. When I have a dive, I'm just working it this way to win this way. The difference out of the dive is also where the slant, the diamond on a slant, I'm usually working back, I'm working back flat. I may push back vertical out of my dive based on what route I'm running. Like, I could work this dive release uh, if he's outside leverage when I have a deep out, which Debo works. He dives outside, pushes back vertical. Uh, whereas a, a diamond release is I'm, I'm winning outside to win inside. Does that make sense? And we're going to get to the diamond later uh, in this presentation yeah. as well. Yeah, we're good. All right, so here's our shed wipe. This is my personally my favorite. Uh, I'm a little biased, though, because I watch a ton of Devontae Adams, and he is probably the best in the game at this. Uh, this is our uppercut. So we're up, out, and back. What I mean by that is he, he tries to latch on shoulder pad. I'm up, out, back, trying to get him off. Um, like I said, like the slap chop to me is more when he's trying to get breastplate. Um, the shed is more so when he's trying to get shoulder higher shoulder pad. Um, we'll take a look at some. Here's Devontae working it. He shoot, So once again, counter punchers, he shoots, we shoot. He's trying to get on the shoulder pad, and I'm shedding him off. He shoots, we shoot. He's trying to get on my shoulder pad, and I shed him right off. 
shoots up, out, and back. Michael Gallup, same thing. He shoots, we shoot, up, out, back. And then Jordy Nelson uh, to the right of your screen. And I like this clip. While the shed is not as evident as the other ones, this is also something we work in STEM. So if he's trying to latch in, in our vertical stem, we could shed him off regardless whether it's at the line of scrimmage or deeper down the field. There it comes again. So it does it at the line, and then he does it again towards the top of his route. So here's our main dodge. Um, this, to me, is usually paired with either a speed or, a, um, or our jabs. Like we'll complete our jabs with the blade. Uh, we're really just eliminating that shoulder pad. Like he wants to hit us on our breastplate. We're eliminating it so he gets us more in the back of our, our shoulder pad, our scapula area. Um, that way when he pushes us, we're not really widened anymore. He's almost pushing us into our route. Uh, ideally, we want to think about getting our chest turned to the sideline. And it is a slight dip in height, but I'm not, I'm not running my knuckles on the ground. Okay, like Because if he gets me when I'm that low, He's going to bench press me to the ground, but I am going to dip a little bit. So here's just some clips, bobbing and weaving. It's reactive. So I'm not just, I'm not just doing it right off the line of scrimmage in the sense I kind of want to shoot. Sometimes we will, but it's more reactive as well. So here's AB working an inside fade. And you're going to see him blade that shoulder off of a speed release. He re, he's reactive with it. So now his chest is to the sideline. Malcolm Butler's hand is now on his shoulder pad. And he's going to work this until he overtakes him. So what I mean by that is he's not just blading and then, and now he's back square again. Okay? He's going to work this until he overtakes him, where he's in front of him. Not a complete stack, but I mean literally he has a, a yard of separation on him before he exits his blade release. It's it's almost like an edge rusher coming around the, the uh, coming around the the edge, or uh, it's that sudden dip. We're trying to remove that shoulder. Here's another rep. He stays on it, and then he does a B shit. Here's the famous blade rep. Once again, like it doesn't have to be this. Like to expect your 14 year old. Freshman to look like AB is negligent, but this is, you know, we say eliminate the shoulder. There it is. So second level releases. Uh, we're bringing the line of scrimmage to him. We're uh, Sometimes we want to attack leverage. Sometimes we want to reverse them and attack away from the defender. Uh, when we do that, we want to attack in Vs, as we mentioned about one to two yards outside of my defender. Okay, we wanna make him make our decision easy. So here's an example. Uh, we'll bring the blade to the, lot, to the cover defender. So this is just less about how we approach it, more about the execution of the blade at the second level. So we're gonna attack. Now AJ Green doesn't have to work it because the cover defender doesn't shoot his hands to lay. He kind of caught between a shit and a fart. Here's a good example of it. Here's Greg Jennings to eliminate the shoulder. That's what we mean by the suddenness of it, eliminate the shoulder. So that's just bringing the blade to our second level release. And I'll talk about when we would use it. So here's an example, and we're gonna dive a little deeper in it right now. So what I meant by attack two yards wide, like here's my cover defender for now, where I, have to, I have to get as clean of a release on this guy as possible. Um, so what I want to do here, he has a, a scene. I don't want to dive in here because if he, if he drives me inside, the route's over. Okay. Could you attack and then slip? Sure. But realistically, I, he's aligned so wide that I can attack here and slip underneath him and I could still be at my landmark. So what I meant by one to two yards, like I kind of want to attack right here. If this guy is still flat footed and he's not threatening to beat me to my spot, I'm going to stay on it. 
if I get to here and he's still not completely threatened, but he can get possibly get a hand on, I'll just blade him and continue outside. If he flips his hip to turn to run because he has to widen immediately, then I'll stick my left foot in the ground and slip him and get back on my vertical stem. So that's what we mean by make him make a decision. Um, I want to attack two yards away from him, and you'll see it play out here. Like Thomas is not straight up the field. He's kind of a little bit on an angle. He's not threatening him to expand him or, or run him uh, too far wide. So he stays on his path and then kind of bends it back inside. Um, now, if he was to expand super quick and he was th uh, to beat us to our spot, I'm, I'm full speed here. I just stick my left foot in the ground and slip underneath him. Uh, and this takes reps, but it, it, it's everybody can do it. We did it with our high school guys, our JV guys. Everybody can do it. Uh, just take some reps in identifying and responding to that stimulus. Right? If you just work this stuff on air and then you get to a game, it's not going to transfer. Like they need to have some type of stimulus that they're responding to, which, tr which kind of simulates what they're going to see in, in live rep. So you just saw an example of uh, staying wide. Here's an example of Martellus Bennett. Here's his cover defender. He's going to stretch here. He overruns it. He slips inside. So winning in our STEM, we can use our STEM as a weapon. Here's some, just some tools that uh, we play around with. Um, attacking the blind spot, we got to use our second level releases, obviously, in our STEM. But here are just some tools. I'm going to go through them rather briefly. Uh, attacking the blind spot is just where we're chasing the near defender's hip. Uh, defenders near hip, always in attack mode. We got to threaten him. We got to heat him up. He has to feel threatened. There's that brief moment where he loses sight of us. Ideally, we want him to flip his hip and speed turn uh, and initiate our break out of his sight. So here's Coop attacking the near hip. Make him turn and run. Can't see us. But the most important, and he works a hezzy here, which we're not going to talk about right now. But the most important thing here is how much he threatens. Like he is in full attack mode. He heats him up and sits it down. Not only for so it's most commonly with curls, comeback, uh, comebacks, and 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 stop routes can be really used for anything which involves him flipping his hip and turn to turn a run. Here's Demarius Thomas on a dig. He expands to the blind spot, chases that near hip, rolls it over. Brandon Cooks, he kind of creates his own his own blind spot here, which we'll get into a little bit uh, when we get to our out routes. But I want to chase here now. Like once he gives me this his butt, like I want to chase so he can't see me. So this is just something that we, we play around with just because guys like to have some creativity in what they do. Um, it builds off attacking the blind spot. We call it the circus stem. I don't really remember where I got that terminology from. Uh, it's We attack where we want to go first. We work back opposite and finish back where we started. Um, when the DB's latched away from our break point, we can usually finish with a fake throw by, which we're going to get into. So Keenan Allen wins outside, works back inside to finish back outside. I think they might call it the circus stem because you just make your cover defender look like a, a fucking clown. I don't really know. Here's Diggs. Went outside, worked back inside, went back outside. And then this is something I wanted to discuss. Um, this You could call this whatever you want. It's really just the, the poster clip for winning uh chasing the blind spot getting in the uh chasing the near hip getting in the blind spot uh but the real thing i want to discuss here is like the importance of understanding the full concept so ty hilton's down at the bottom of our screen he's not uh he's on the back side of, of andrew lux reed here so he's able to do whatever he wants in his vertical stem right now and he just chases the blind spot like four times he creates it um but the reason he's able to spend that much time in his stem is because of him not being in the primary read, 
So what I mean by that is Luck is going to – they got play action. Okay, so Luck's reading the left side of the field here. So if we go back and watch T.Y. Hilton, he really works this stem. He's got a deep inbreaker. So let's say he just pushed this thing vertical, wins inside, pushes vertical, or even chases blind spot and pushes vertical. If he breaks in early, he's on top of this other uh, inbreaker's route, or out, technically outbreaker, I believe. I don't know where he came from. Yeah, outbreaker. So he's on his back. So understanding the concept, uh, this is play action. Is it inside zone? Is it outside zone? What? what how long is the the play action. So there's obviously inside zone takes a little bit quicker than outside zone. Um, like understanding where I am in the progression, like that dictates what I can do in my stem, how creative I can get, uh, like how much time I have to manipulate my cover defender. I think that's something that should be taken away from this clip that T.Y. Hilton's not just doing whatever the fuck he wants. Like he's doing this for a reason. Uh, this is something we play around with as well. So the peak technique is the same side release tool. So it's not a double move. Uh, nothing changes in our route stem, just a slight peak prior to our break point. Uh, we want to limit any change of height or loss of speed. Nothing should change in our vertical stem other than we just kind of snap our head for a, about a tenth of a second prior to our break. So here's Calvin Ridley. He dives inside, but he ends up finishing back out. So I'm just going to turn my head. Okay, this guy can't tell if I could see the ball or not. It's the action of turning my head, which makes him believe I'm looking for it. Right before my break and I roll it over. Peak, leave him. Devontae Adams, same thing. Working double jab. He's going to peak and leave him. So now we're gonna get into some route, like real routes, full routes. Uh, we went over the line of scrimmage. We went over the stance to start. We went over winning in our stem. Uh, now we're gonna talk about some 90s. So inner outbreakers uh, versus cushion. We're saying less is more, let's roll this shit over. Obviously, um, based on scheme, that may be locked into a square cut, but we're saying if it's not, we're rolling it over. Uh, his cushion is our, our separation. We, we just need to maintain it um, versus press. We could work opposite release throw by or same side release fight pressure with pressure. Give them the flipper or the chicken wing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and obviously, we're, we're trying to stay in attack mode. So here's some examples of some quick outs. Here's Deshaun Jackson. Waste no time. He's right here. No time. Just attack. Roll it over. This is routes on air for us, essentially. Like this guy, sometimes football is really this easy. Like all I have to do is attack work a speed cut, and roll it over. Uh, previous presentations, we dive really deep in the discussion of how to, how to run a speed cut, the mechanics of it. Uh, for the sake of time, we're, we're not going to dive deep into that today because we're, we're just discussing the tools to win. Keyshawn Johnson attacks, rolls it over. Uh, could even finish a little bit more flat and negative late with his chin to his shoulder, but just cushion at the break point, right? So five yards at the top, five yards at the break, five yards of separation. By the time I roll my foot in the ground, the ball's out. This guy's late. Less is more, okay? Same concept. Cushion at the break point. Roll it over. Waste no time. So now we'll talk about uh, when we have to, same thing, speed cut. We have high outside leverage. Often occurs when we're condensed. Um, we just want to spray to this outside shoulder. So what, what we mean by spray is with this, uh, when I have a guy high and outside, I'm not just going to run my route straight up. I'm not going to just attack vertical. I'm going to attack in a straight line. Okay, so I'm not circling out to square. I'm straight line to his outside shoulder, 
to try and regain uh, route leverage. Doug Baldwin at the top. Really nice job snapping his head out of this, glues his chin to his shoulder. Julio Jones, bottom of your screen. Spray, speed cut. Pushing at the break point. Break down for what? Break down for what? We got eight yards of separation. Ask any quarterback if they like eight yards of separation. Okay, they're going to tell you yes, 11 out of 10 times. Roll that shit over, it's routes on air. Okay, so now we got, we're taking same side release. So Edelman here is running an inbreaker. Uh, we're going to get to the top, fight pressure with pressure, and separate. Um, he works a little flipper here. The big thing here is I want to force this guy around over the top as I finish flat. Here it is on an outbreaker. It wins outside. Pressure or pressure. Snap it off and separate. You can lean into him. You can flipper at the end of it. You can kind of half extend your arm. If he's latched, we're allowed to latch. Okay. Um, there are multiple ways to do it, but whatever he's putting on us, we want to put more back to separate. Uh, the big thing here is that I'm still attacking vertical. Like I'm not bullshitting here because I want this guy turned to run this way. Because you'll see here when he when we snap flat. He still continues down the field. That's not because of the pressure he uses. That's because of him still attacking vertical uh, in his stem. And then here's another example of it. Uh, this is more like a short post, but it's a good example of pressure or pressure. Odell Beckham in the slot here is the point man in the, in the stack. Lean, separate. Lean, separate. This is a same side release tool. So what I mean by that is I got an inbreaker. I went inside on my release. I'm going to fight pressure with pressure. I have an outbreaker. I went outside with my release. I'm going to fight pressure with pressure. Uh, the throw by we're going to get into here because that's another one. Um, so now we got deeper in, deeper outs. Uh, same thing, speed cut if there's cushion at the break. Uh, spray speed if he's high and outside. We got to win back route leverage. Um, so this is something that we've been playing around with as well. It's, it's, uh, really fun, uh, spray resem to speed. Uh, this is when we try and spray to that outside shoulder, but we can't capture it. We'll stick back vertical to try and get him to flip a sip and turn to run. And then we'll work a speed cut. It's almost like creating a blind spot, if you will. Um, and then depending on where we are, sometimes, uh, scheme determines our break point. If we have to snap down or dr uh, drop on a in breaker, we have to break down or he's a little bit tight to our depth and we can't really speed cut because the gap the gain uh the ground i gain will bring me into him i gotta drop sound violently suddenly and break flat underneath and we'll talk about all of these right now so here's michael thomas uh we saw a bunch of speed cuts this is just another good one to show so he's gonna attack attack vertical this is frozen right before he rolls this over does, you can't tell what route he's running. And I think that's the most important thing. His cover defenders got, there's so much cushion. There's so much uh, separation by alignment that my, that his cover defenders not even on the screen right now. So all we have to do is roll this over and speed cut. Attack, we're going to attack vertical, roll it over. Same thing on an inbreaker, speed cut. So this guy's hipped with us, but he's he's turned to run this way. We're attacking vertical. I could still roll this over because he has to react to the break. And you can see why some teams like to square cut inbreakers. Like this gets real close. Des Bryant. Roll it over. So we'll also work a rocker step in our speed cut. This is really subtle. It's not uh, identical to the rockers you see in, in your posts and your corners. Um, it's, it's just something to freeze him or, 
or have him take a step in the opposite direction of where we want to go. It's Devontae Adams in the slot. One, two. So he's going to stick left, roll off his right. Works well when he's he's kind of he's kind of tight to our route depth. Um, just something to freeze him or pull him this way. Here's Michael Pittman, bottom of your screen. Just watch how subtle it is. It's not a, we're not overstriding. Um, just something to pull him. It's almost like a pressure step prior to our speed cut. And you can see what it does to his cover defender. Gonna stick left, followed by the speed cut out. And then, so we're, we're just like in our quick outs, when he's high and outside, we're going to spray and attack that outside shoulder. A, B up at the top. Watch how much width he gets in his vertical stem. Just capture that outside shoulder, roll him over. One more. Chase the near hip. Work a speed cut. So now we try and spray, and this guy matches our stem. He gets with with us. I can't get my route leverage back. Okay, he he's expands. I'm gonna stick my right foot in the ground, and now I I really created a blind spot. Okay, now I'm gonna push back vertical, and I'm gonna work my speed cut from there. Similar uh, rep here. I'm going to spray. Now, he, we could still get route leverage, but he's he's opened up to where we want to break to, okay? So if we roll this over, he may, be able to, he may be able to jump it. But he gives us an opening, okay? Let's chase here. So we spray. He opens up outside. Chase that near hip when he gives it to me. And then the importance of attacking leverage, right? Like here's our here's a, a deep out from the uh, outside receiver. He has an outside cover defender. Does not give him anything to either pull him inside, and does not give him anything. Uh, doesn't doesn't spray at that outside shoulder. Okay, so he's high and outside. We need to do something to win back route leverage. We don't. He just jumps it. Probably shouldn't have thrown the ball there, but I'm not going to question Eli. He's throwing a lot more touchdowns than I have. Um, so here's an example when we got to snap and, and break, break down. So before we dive into the break or how we, ex uh, how we execute it or why we use it, just watch Julio's vertical stem here. Like he is in attack mode. This guy flips his hip and turns to run, turns to run because of the aggressiveness, aggressiveness in which Julio is attacking in his vertical stem. Um, and that's the most important thing of any route. Forget about, I need to use this break versus this coverage versus do this when this happens, we need to be in attack mode. And, and when you put this guy's film on, he's always attacking. Okay, so now it's he's gonna snap down. If I speed cut here, I'm a little bit tight, right? Like I'm a little tight to where the cover defender is, I might run into him. Um the other thing we saw when when against this contour is like we saw Devante and we saw Michael Pittman work a rocker. Not Julio's game as much. So Julio just stops on a dime and breaks it flat. Uh, so this is another example of when we would use the breakdown other than schemes uh, reason. So he's attacking. He's going to snap. And then uh, I'm not going to dive completely deep into it because we it's in the other presentations. Um, nose over, hip sink, arms tight to body. And I'm going to kind of rotate. I'm going to enter square with my snap. I'm going to kind of rotate my body to my break post snap down. And anybody that has questions on that, um, for the sake of time, we're not going to dive completely deep into it today, but please shoot me a message after this. We'll get on Zoom another day and we will we'll 
dive deep into it. So what I meant by if he speed cuts this and gains ground, like he's probably going to, it's going to be tough to avoid this cover defender. So he snaps it down, stops on the dime. Square cut. And here's another example of Calvin Ridley doing it on an inbreaker. Snap down, nose over, arms tight, and we're going to run out of it. Now, oftentimes, we'll square cut. We'll square cut an inbreaker when we have another inbreaker inside us. Like, if I roll this over right now, like this, we'll be pissing in the same Coke bottle, okay? So that's another example when we want to square things. It's really, you know, what your OC wants, what you want. But if I speed cut this, Sanu and Ridley are pissing in the same Coke bottle. All right, so long 90s versus press. We have our same side release tools. We spoke about pressure or pressure, so we're not going to go over it. We spoke about our peak to speed cut, so we're not going to go over that right now. We will talk about stack. When we, when we beat them at the line of scrimmage, um, we'll talk about how we stack it and give them a hip shift at the top, and we will dive into the throw by. The stack to hip shift is the same for the opposite release, but we'll talk about the um, fake throw by as well. So here's an example. Uh, Devontae Adams, the bottom of your screen. We're gonna dive inside, we're gonna work inside here. Inside release, so now he has route leverage, so I'm taking an opposite release. He's gonna try and latch, I'm gonna throw by. I'm gonna throw by right at where, ideally, the closer to the shoulder, the better, but we need to make contact with something. This is my favorite um, release tool, not release tool, um, separation tool with an opposite release. I love, when guys attack vertical, the most important thing here is that Devontae is truly threatening vertical. He stops, it's a slight weight drop and a throw by. Amari Cooper at the top, attack, throw by. You'll see him almost pull his guy's arm through. That's ideal. Sometimes it's tough to do that, but if you can, do it. The big thing here is he is threatening vertical. Like this is not bullshit in his vertical stem. DeAndre Hopkins, probably the most physical receiver in the league. Attack vertical, throw by. If we do this appropriately and, and properly, uh, properly, he should fly down the field. The importance of being uh, aggressive in our vertical stem here the importance of um, being aggressive in our vertical stem here is if you ever try and push somebody when they're not moving, it's hard, okay? If I'm running full speed and he's running full speed, the force I need to keep him moving is minimal. But if I'm bullshitting and he's bullshitting and neither of us are at full speed, it's a lot harder to move a human being who's at a lesser velocity. And then say, these are all the same clips. Michael Irvin, like we didn't, you know, no, we didn't reinvent the wheel here. Like people have been doing this for years. We just got to coach it. So now we're going to talk about um, opposite release, but we beat him. So now I can't throw him by because I'm, I'm stacked. Like basically I'm three, two yards ahead of him. I'm going to, I'm just going to stack him up. I want to give him some type of head and shoulder, some type of hip shift to pull him opposite of my break. So here we have Cole uh, Beasley working inside. Gathers info. All right, now he goes. So now I, I the throw by is no more. The throw by is no more right now. Okay. So now I'm going to stack and give him something to freeze him or pull him opposite of where I want to go. It could be left, right, like a similar to a, just a rocker set that doesn't gain much ground. It can be just a, a inset where I, I give my head and shoulders. Uh, it's really whatever you want to do. Just be patient with it. Here's Adam Thielen, same concept. He's got an inbreaker, dives outside. Gives him a hip shift at the top. And then one more is DJ Moore dives inside, works an inside release. Just a, a minor hip shift to the end.
And then here's some fake throw buys. So this is also a same side release tool. When he's latched uh, at the at route depth, I can't stack. He's latched. You can fight pressure with pressure, or you can work this. This is PhD level shit, but kids love it. it love it. It's fun to work. Um, so I'm just gonna act like I'm gonna throw him by here. Okay. So this would be exactly what I would be doing if I was breaking to the out. And now I just work inside. You'll notice that this guy turns. This cover defender turns to the out because he thinks he's getting thrown by. Another rep, Jerry Judy. His guy's going to turn to the out because he thinks he's getting a throw by. We just peek behind and leave. Okay, this is, takes a lot of patience. Guy's internal clock's going 100 miles a minute, so it's hard to execute, but it's doable. All right, so 90s versus catch. Um, he's uh, about a yard or two above our depth. Uh, we want to hit him with our best open field crossover. We got to get him off of his landmark. If I speed cut this or I square cut it, he's just going to snatch me right up. So we're really just bringing our jabs to the top of the uh, route. Uh, the timing of how much uh, patience I can have is where am I in the progression? What is my depth? Are they bringing more than we can protect? We're patient. We're sudden. And just like our hip shift, uh, uh, just like our jabs, we're pushing off that inside edge, shifting and transferring our weight from hip to hip. Michael Thomas, he's number three in the trips here. Cover defenders playing catch. His feet are in the ground, okay? So maybe not your, te your, your textbook catch, but both feet are in the ground. He's no longer retreating. If I roll this over, he's going to snatch it. If I break down, he's going to snatch it. So I have to give him something to either move him this way or keep him here. Cooper Cup. Now he doesn't have to give as much because he has route leverage here. But he gives him a little hip shift to freeze him. Devontae Adams is playing catch technique at our depth. Okay, just like we spoke about our jabs in the, in the um, line of scrimmage. Like, I don't want to be toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy. Like, I need to be able to avoid contact. We like using our arms, uh, arms length apart. Um, here's an example of why that's important. Okay, so I when I when I'm when I have a guy who's at my depth, both feet in the ground, he's not even in good position, but he's still got his feet in the ground about a yard from my route depth. If I just roll this over or speed cut it, we're talking right here. If I just roll this over or speed cut it, this is what's going to happen. I'm snatched and I'm covered. Okay, this is one of the best route runners in college football this year. I'm snatched and I'm covered. I want to break down and give him something to freeze him or pull him opposite of where I want to go. Michael Thomas, inside, bottom of your screen. Notice the distance here between the two of them. He cannot collision. Cooper Cup. Uh, number two receiver, top of your screen. I'm going to get a better view of it. But let's just watch it from here. Heats up space. Hits him with the crossover at the top. Okay. Attack. He's kind of squatted near my depth. If I roll this over, he's jumping it. If I square cut it, he's jumping it. I need to give him something to pull him this way or freeze them. That's Marshawn Lattimore. He's one of the best corners in the league. We're patient. It's going to work. Foot, hip, shoulder, head, all together. We're bringing our jabs to the top of our route. We have to move our cover defender. All right, so now we're going to talk about the hitch. Uh, we won't go as in-depth because it's a little bit more of a simple route. Um, we're, the big thing here is we're in attack mode in our vertical stem. We're vertical until we have to drop pop or drop our, our weight to get out of it. We'll talk about drop pop. We'll talk about a snap down. 
uh, versus press. And this thing is locked. We have something over the top of it. Um, vertical until we're going to snap, going to drop pop, whatever you need to do to decel. And it's uh, going to be a throw by if he's latched on with an arm bar. So here are just some examples of a drop pop. Uh, Stefan Diggs, bottom of your screen. Attack, drop pop. Okay, we're not going to dive too deep into, in, into break points. All drop pop is three big, two little. The first little step, I'm dropping, sinking into a little bit. The next one, I'm popping and returning outside. Same thing. One, two, three, drop, pop, ball. Big thing here is T.Y. Hilton's threatening vertical. Okay, if we bullshit, he's going to know something's coming. And then here's an example of just more of a breakdown in the hitch. Ultimately, we, we don't really win this with the break point as much as we do attacking vertical stem. Hitch versus off, another route. It's, it's routes versus air for us. Now we got press. Uh, I like the opposite release this and work a throw by. Now, if you drop well enough, you don't even need to throw by. But Adam Humphreys does such a good job attacking vertical that his guy's momentum is so damn fast down the field that when he stops, he can't match it. When arm is latched, though, we got to work a throw by. So I'm heating him up, full strides to exit. He, th he shoots, we throw by. So this is, for example, like the, the hitch is locked on for some reason. A lot of times uh, we'll convert hitches versus press. If you have something over the top or you just want to keep it on, uh, this is how we're winning it. So we'll talk curls. So now, uh, same thing, we're in attack mode. Like I know I've had this on every slide because it's that important. Like we bullshit, he knows it, okay? So we are in full attack mode in our vertical stem. We're vertical until our route depth. Um, we're gonna work a snap down and a weight drop to exit. So I'm attacking, I'm gonna drop. No indicator, right? So I'm in full attack mode, vertical, vertical, vertical. Snap down. Drop and run out. Ideally, we'd run out. He does a good job exiting. Uh, Terrence Williams catches with his body sometimes. Michael Gallup at the top of your screen. Attacking vertical. Snap, run out. This is a good example of running out of my break. When we snap, hip sink, nose over, arms tight, run out of my break. Curl versus off is another one. Routes versus air for us, okay? This is a cool thing I saw uh, from some one-on-ones with the Broncos, I, I believe in the early 2010s. Um, he kind of chases the blind spot here on a curl, which is pretty cool. I thought it was pretty cool. I haven't really seen much of it. He's going to expand here like he's going to slip to go vertical, snaps it down, and runs back out of it. Uh, just another tool in the toolbox that we've been playing around with. So now we got press or we're hipped at our depth. A still attack mode, still vertical until depth. Uh, we're going to work a snap down or weight drop followed by a throw by. Could peak, um, but I prefer the throw by. Now, if it's if we, we're winning same side release, all it is is I'm vertical and I'm, I'm really just working my, my break. It basically comes down to who gets out of a curl better. Is it me or is it the DB? Like who work? You guys, we work top of curl routes all the time. We say all the time, right now, the winner of this route is who runs the top of the curl better. Like here, here's Marquise Goodwin. Here's the corner. Whoever gets out of a curl better wins. Because if he can't match my break, I'm open. Okay? You also add in the reaction buffer where he has to react to my break point. As long as I'm providing no indicators, we uh, basically should have a head start. Um, so we say all the time, we same side release on curls. It comes down to who, who gets out of it better. with the caveat of being that we're pushing vertical, we're providing no indicators, okay? So the same side release, inside, who runs it better? Same concept, here's Julio at the top, same side release, who runs a curl better? 
we work top of curls a lot more than DBs do. So we better run it better. And then same concept on a stop route. So now we're talking opposite release, okay? Because latched at our depth. I want to, I want to work this uh, throw by technique here. So he's latched, arms on. I'm going to strike anywhere from, uh, you know, really wrist to shoulder, elbow to shoulder, ideally. Now he takes a circle release because he's so tight to the line. He's got a condensed split. Vertical, 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 throw by, bowl. Now working back to the QB, depends on scheme. Um, we'll see one here. Same clips from the one-on-ones with the Broncos from I don't really know when. Opposite release, so I got a curl, which is technically an in-breaker. I'm going to win outside, attack, attack, attack. Arm is latched, thrown by, run out. Big thing here is we're not bullshitting our vertical stem. Attack, 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 throw by. We'll talk comebacks, very similar to curl, um, the break point, rather. Uh, we got cushion at our depth. We're going to try and attack that blind spot, get, get in that near hit um, so he cannot see us. We have to threaten vertical here. Uh, this is a route you can play around at the Hezzy in your stand or whatever you want. But to me, let's go heat him up. Let's make this look like I'm trying to win over the top. I get to that near hit. I'm snapping down. Marvin Harrison, top of your screen. Attack, 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 drop, run out. Another one, like these to me, curls versus off, uh, comeback versus off, like cushion out our depth pitches, cushion out our depth outs, cushion out our depth ins. Like these should really be like routes on air to us. When there's cushion at our break point, the only way we're covered is by telling the DB what we're running. Um, and, the, and the way we do that is by giving them one of those indicators. So here's another comeback. I'm going to chase the near hip. Drop down. The big thing I like about this route is that he doesn't just bow out here. Like a lot of guys will just get whiffed. Like he's attacking in line, like straight line. So he's, he's vertical, he's vertical. He's going to just kind of expand slightly to act like he's going to slip and go vertical. Come back, come back versus off, we want to get in that near hip, get in that blind spot. So now we're pressed, uh, reverse press, we're hipped at our depth. Uh, we want to work. I, I don't like opposite releasing on comebacks. I guess it, I don't really know why. I've never done them. Like you could talk me out of that very easily. I just haven't seen much of them. Uh, you could, I guess, inside release to throw by, but we're going to talk about outside releasing. Uh, we have to sell vertical here. We have to get him turned to run with the threat of vertical. And at the top, we're going to work a snap down to run out of it, a weight drop, whatever you want to call it. Uh, some guys aren't as comfortable snapping down as others. Just a violent drop of weight to run out. Uh, we could possibly work that peak before snapping down. Attack, 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 peak, drop. Really nice job sinking his hips. like the best comeback run of all time. It's a shame it wasn't in the game. Big thing, like I'm, I'm pushing vertical. Mari Cooper is not bullshitting his strides here. Nose over, run out. One thing we've been playing around with actually is not winning, not winning the vertical too much on a comeback. I know it, it's tough concept to wrap your head around, but it's you almost give him a head start if you're three yards in front of him on the break to the comeback. Um, so we don't really want to crush them at the line of scrimmage here. Julio, top of your screen. Really nice job, works the peak. He kind of throttles because it's a scramble drill a little bit. But it kind of helps him out because 
if he's running away from him right now, there's going to be a lot of space here. He might be able to recover on the comeback. Go over slants, and we'll, it'll be the last thing we cover for the day. Um, versus off, cushion at depth. Like, once again, I'm going to say it another time, it's vertical until it's not. It's a three-step route. We should not be bullshitting anything. We're in attack mode. We stick our foot in the ground. It's a completion. Like, if the ball's on time, it's, it's a completion. It's routes on air for us. The way we run this with no DB out there should be the same. I'm attacking. I'm sticking my, my outside foot in the ground on the third step. If it's four, you – Whatever steps you use, and I'm I'm breaking to my slant. I don't need to give any any head. I don't need to give any any foot. I don't need to give any shoulder. Like run through your defender, stick your foot in the ground, balls on you. Less is more. Okay, so Corey Coleman, top of your screen, cushion at the break point. One, two, three, ball. Less is more. Easy offense. Sometimes football is really this easy. One, two, three, ball. He's not giving anything outside, too far outside his framework here. There's a time and place, but when there's this much cushion at, the, at, at our depth, fuck him. We don't need to move him anywhere. We're, we're, we're good with it just like this. Stevie Johnson. Okay, we got about uh, seven yards of cushion at our break. What the fuck do we need a head and shoulder fake for? Just stick our left foot in the ground and the ball's on us. Less is more. Michael Thomas making it look exactly the same. Okay, this is frozen at his second stride. We'll see it on his third. Same exact body mechanics. By the time he sticks his left foot in the ground, DB's late every time. Okay, versus press or outside leverage. Uh, so we have outside leverage press. We work a single jab to move or freeze that cover defender. Uh, the biggest part here is that we're reestablishing vertical. So I'm not just jabbing and breaking to my slant because he's just going to be on my back. Uh, so I'm jabbing, reestablishing vertical, pressure stepping back to my slant. Here's Odell at the top of your screen. He's going to work a jab with his right foot. He's going to move Desmond, uh, Desmond Trufant. Now, most important part here, I'm back here now, okay? I'm not just breaking here, A, because of the low cover defender, but even if it was a one-on-one -on -one rep, he could just hop right on my back here and, and possibly break this up. So I have to reestablish vertical, and at the angle of departure here is based on a million different things. We're not going to dive into that. Um, so I'm working my single jab. So now he's, he's moving out, okay? So now the DB's moving out. Now he has to reestablish and chase vertical. And by the time he reestablishes vertical, I'm already breaking to my slant. Okay, it's, it's, it's brutal, brutal to cover. It's a lot of movements in a short uh, time, a lot of reaction for the DB in a short time. We know where we're going, he does not. Single jab, keep him out there. Obviously hands are, are prepared for co uh, combat. Attack vertical, break to the slant. Calvin Ridley, same thing, just eats up space prior to doing it. Bottom of your screen. One more with Sterling Shepard. Single jab, reestablish vertical, break to the slant. Watch the suddenness. Watch out, watch how he gets the DB to flip his hips now to turn around. Okay, so he jabs, he expands. Okay, he does a nice job. This is AJ Gure, who's an unbelievable corner. He expands, okay? Jab, DB expands. Now watch him flip this hip to turn and run. That's what wins this route, okay? If Shep just breaks to the slant early, right now, like he's on his back. Like right out of a single jab, like DB's on his back. There's no separation. The vertical stem is what creates the separation. And then this will be the last part of the slants that we go over. This is the diamond release, which we spoke about, uh, is kind of related to the dive release. Uh, we're attacking in Vs. So I'm attacking in my dive, I'm attacking here. and my diamond, I'm attacking here. I have to, have to, have to threaten vertical. Got, you know, you can have the right idea, but if you don't execute it properly, it doesn't matter. Can't tell you how many times guys will work this diamond, but they'll bullshit their strides 
to the to the, the diamond, the outside release, and the DB is just sitting there. So when we try and snap underneath him, he just yokes us up. Okay, we have to get him to flip his hip and turn and run with this uh, this diamond, if you will, this outside release. Uh, we're always prepared for combat. So here's Amari Cooper. So he runs this exactly how we would run a vertical, kind of stretches him inside. Now he's and now it's a go ball. Now it's a vertical. Attack, snap underneath. Different rep, same game. Attack, snap underneath. We have to get him to flip his hip and turn and run. How we exit this is really based on what at what point does he flip his hip and turn and run, okay? He's flipped now, so I'm gonna stop on my left, break on my right. Sometimes we'll single step exit. It's based on where the DB is and, and what guys are comfortable doing. And last, last clip of the day, Darius Slayton takes it, come to balance, speed release, full strides, snaps underneath. Biggest thing about this is that we are threatening vertical. If that's the one thing you take away from it, we have to open his hip up to turn and run this way. All right, coach. Good for today. Nah, awesome stuff, Mike. Awesome stuff. Really appreciate that. I know we've got a, a couple questions in there um, that were you kind of answered as we were going along. But if anybody has any questions uh, for coach in regards to uh, the presentation, man, just drop them in that chat right there. Uh, until then, uh, if you want to share your contact information so they can hit yeah. you up if they got any questions. Or like I say, guys, I mean, you know, great follow. Uh, definitely offers up a ton of resources, uh, really good, really good videos and, and explanations on a lot of stuff. There it is. There it is. Uh, really good stuff, man. I mean, the, the breakdown and just everything super detailed, man. That's what's awesome. Yeah, I tried to have something where like, if he does this, then we do this type of thing. Like not yeah. not diving, not diving too deep into the break points because that's a whole nother like that that would take hours, right? Like break the doing all this with the break points, just like it would be forever. So I just having a plan for each thing. No, I think, I think it's awesome. Um, you know, like being at the high school level, not having like a tremendous amount of time, you know, with, with uh, my guys, I know specifically, like, I mean, of course we, you know, I'll touch on certain coverages and like what they look like with them, but more or less, like I want them to be able to, uh, understand different leverages and how it affects the route that you're running. Mm -hmm. So like, that's exactly what you're, you're talking about here. And, uh, it, it's awesome. So now, like, like you said, the really important aspect of it is having that plan. So when you, you know, when you understand what route you're running along with, you know, dissecting how the, the DB's playing you, you know, shoot, man, it's like, you feel so confident because you know, all right, yeah. outside leverage on this route, this is what I got, you know, this dude's inside leverage. Whatever. So um, really good stuff. Really good stuff. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it, Coach. And I think what you said is pretty accurate in the sense that, like, you know, if you can't beat the man covering you, it doesn't really matter what coverage they're running, right? Like, it, it doesn't matter. So we definitely need to have a plan when we get out there, especially, like, the young guys will get out there and they'll just – they'll just – they'll okay, you got a curl. Like, how many times in one-on-ones have you sent the kid out and he's got a curl and – he gets out there and he has no fucking idea what to do. You yeah. know, like it's just, you know, give these guys the tools. Yeah, explain, so we got to coach them up how to use them, when to use them, and, and then just provide them with the stimulus to work on them. For sure. Like I said, when you're, you know, when you're on that line of scrimmage, um, you know, under, don't get me wrong, if a, if a kid fully understands how coverages work, great. But you know what? Can you decipher, you know, or, or, or really dissect the depth of, that defender playing you and the leverage along with what your route is, you know, the plan comes to you. Uh, do you see the, the, do you have the chat open? Yeah. Okay. Just, uh, you know, just some, some, some praise in there, man. So which is, which is really cool. Appreciate you guys tuning in for sure. Yeah, guys, I'm telling you, uh, reach out to him. And then just, you know, like I said, he's a, a great follow. A lot of this stuff, right? He'll, he'll you know, obviously, you know, with uh, with the uh, with Twitter the way it is, you know, obviously you're not going to post a, a ton of stuff, you know, breaking it down in shorter shorter videos, 
um, mm. is, is, is great. So, and, and a lot of this stuff, man, you'll see on this page. So um, definitely do that, man. Check it out for sure.